Welcome in to the Kiyon Sports. Nate at the plates tonight. Vince McKee alongside Eli Moonenham. Welcome in, Eli. Thanks, Vince. Very excited to be back at the Slovenian National Ballroom here. Fail in the Ballroom 28. A packed house, right? The most packed I've seen it, at least. And it's going to be a very fun evening. And we're going to get underway right away, Vince. You know, we got about one in the red corner. It's going to be Jake Nugent out of Strong Style in Independence, Ohio, against Dominic Mendez out of International BC, which is a boxing club out of Toledo, Ohio. And we're underway. Nugent in the red corner and in the blue corner, Mendez. And Eli, I'm going to let you fly solo here. Take it oh, over. All right. Uh, Vince got to handle some big boss things. So here we go, folks. Down, up against the ropes near to us. Swinging away in a combination to the face there was Mendez. He backs... Ties up rather with Nugent, and frees away does Nugent. Nugent ducks over a left. A follow up right into the body goes Mendez. Nugent teeing off on the head, so the two kind of even there. A nice jab there by Nugent. Scratch that rather by Mendez, and they clinch up. A break here by the referee. They stand in the middle. A body shot followed by an overhand right there by Nugent. Nice body shot there by Nugent. Tried to follow it up with a right. Shoot that right! Trading there, but nothing too substantial on either end. Nugent goes with a one two count nice. to the head. Down, now goes to the body, opens up a nice clean baby over. right hook there to the right side of Mendez's face. They'll cinch up in a clinch once again, broken up here in round one of our very first fight of the evening. 14 bouts for you. Headlined by Terry DeMore and Adam Gazoka. That'll be for the middleweight Jake. championship of the world. That's later on, so. Don't go anywhere. Body shots there by Dominic Mendez. Out of International BC being cornered by Brody Stanford, a fellow champion. Brody has had some very, very fun fights in this Slovenian National Ballroom, including a fight against Anthony Canella. That Kian Sports was here to call quite some time ago. It's felt like forever ago. Brody not on the card tonight, but is cornering. Mendez. Hey, put it on him, Jake. Nugent he's with a crazy. heavy right. And some fatigue seeming to set in for Mendez. A far away left hook there by Nugent. Doesn't land too much there. Mendez walking him down to end the round. And that'll complete round one of action. Nugent will head to his red corner, headlined by Brian Gideon. Fresh off the first Gideon promotion fight war on the shore that we were here there last week. He's cornering the first fighter of the evening, Nugent, out of strong style. Mendez will talk it over with Stanford, and we'll take a quick pause in the cause for action. Back for round two, Eli Muniam of Key On Sports here with you for Battle in the Ballroom 28. Vince McKee handling some big boss man things right now. He'll be with us later, so don't be alarmed, fight fans. Right now, I'll guide you through it, though. Nugent and Mendez up for round two. Nugent in the blue corner. Excuse me, Nugent in the red corner, hey, Mendez hey, in the blue him. corner. Get around him. Nugent with a nice right to the head of Mendez. And right now, Mendez, Dominic Mendez continues to push in on Nugent, hoping to kind of eliminate some of that range Nugent has. But right now, all it's turning into is a little bit of a clinch. They push off, and then Nugent goes back to exposing the range. And he's won the inside. Swinging wildly there is Mendez. Nugent circles around and hits a nice right. Followed with a left, and now some body shots by Nugent follows up to the head, and he's winning these exchanges right now. They break. Nice, Jake, nice! A nice three-piece combo to the head, followed up with a straight right there by Jake Nugent out of strong style. Right now putting on a really good performance out of two rounds, or a round and a half thus far. There you go, Jake, get your work in. Nugent walks in, rather, Mendez walks make in. Apologies, move, folks. He doesn't land clean there, and now gets stuck. Two overhands locked in on Nugent. They're going to have to break it. The official does call for the break. Right out of that, Nugent lands an overhand right. Follow the straight, two straights right. And actually connected with the left. Now punch close to the back of the head in that clinch. But it lands once again for Nugent. Here's Mendez. Gets Nugent up against the rope. And Nugent immediately sneaks out and hits two left hands. Two jabs, that is, out of the break. Body shots there, landing flush for Mendez, but not doing too much damage to Jake good, Nugent. Jake, good. Bro, Jake, put it on him. And Nugent He's just continues going, to be Jake. active. Mendez has slowed down some of his pace from round one, and right now, 
Nugent. Jake Nugent is just having his way. He's walking all around the ring, and when he finally meets Dominic Mendez, he lands. Two, three, sometimes four in a row. He's landing at an efficient rate. That brings us to the end of round two. Two rounds in the books. Nugent Mendez, the first fight of 14. Keon Sports, back with you for Battle in the Ballroom 28. Round three of our three round scheduled contest between Jake Nugent out of Strong Style and Dominic Mendez out of International Boxing Club. Mendez in the blue, Nugent in the red, and a heavy right hand there by Jake Nugent to open up the third round. Much the delight of his Strong Style coaches here in the corner nearby. Nice hook! Nice exchange, a hook there landed by Nugent. Follows up with a left jab and lands clean there. Nice left hook to follow. Body shot followed up with a right to the chin of Mendez and he falls with another straight. Nice. Keep catching that all day. A jab by Nugent who continues to be active. And that is the one thing nice, out of many you can take away nice hook, from Jake. Nugent's performance. He has been active and he has been landing through these exchanges. Mendez being the aggressor now, walking forward, but Nugent's not doesn't seem phased by it. He just seems to be allowing Mendez to take him wherever he wants to take him in the ring, knowing in his mind that he can beat him in any facet right now. And Mendez has got to eliminate that thought, or it's not gonna change the outcome of this fight. In and out, in and out, in and out, get it. Nugent blocks a shot there by Mendez. Ducks under, comes back up with a left. A nice way to eke himself out of da a danger there. And Nugent just continues to pour down a left to the low chin and up high near the cheek. And getting out of there with another three-piece combo. Body shots trying to set up something out of the clinch. They'll break. Nugent hits a one-two there. A left followed by a right. Walked into this bottom right corner. Mendez tries to land a right. It landed a little bit there on Nugent. Now backs up into this bottom left corner. Hits a few body shots. And follows up with a one-two on the top. The second punch didn't land as clean to the head, but signs of life here in the third round for Dominic Mendez. Nugent battling Come out on, of busy, Jake. this situation where he's being Five. backed down. Finish. Landing a nice Finish. right. Finish. Now he lands Finish. some body shots. Up a up nice up jab up there as the Jake round comes to a close. Jake. The fight comes to a close. And that's it. Jake Nugent and Dominic Mendez fight to a decision here to open up Battle in the Ballroom 28. From the Slovenian National Ballroom, Vince McKee seems to be done almost with boss man things. I'm getting text alerts all over my phone. With that being said, he should be joining us shortly in the next fight. But until then, we're going to see who wins this one. New Jin and Mendez, they fight to a finish. Eli Mooney, I'm here at Keon Sports. We're back with a decision after this. Back at Battle in the Ballroom 28, Eli Mooney of Keon Sports. The official decision between Jake Nugent of Strong Style and Dominic Mendez of International Ball Boxing Club. Let's end up headed up. Send it up. How about that? Let's send it up to Paul Schill for the official decision. You're a winner by decision out of Strong Style in Independence, Ohio, Jake Nugent. So the first win in the books for Brian Gideon and company. They'll have some fighters later on tonight. But until then, we'll get geared up for our next action. Stay tuned. Key on Sports, Battle of the Ballroom 28. Eli Muniam and he soon to be on the way, Vince McKee. And as always, tonight's fights brought to you by all of our fine sponsors. Up first tonight is Richard Ward of Remax Beyond 2000. Richard Ward is a full-time realtor specializing in listing homes, new home construction, military relocation, and pricing strategies. Whether buying or selling, Richard Ward has the experience and knowledge and determination to get the job done. Contact him at richardwardrealty.com. Also, Hinkley Roofing. It doesn't matter if it's business or residential. Your top roofer in Ohio is Hinkley Roofing. They're family run and built on the principles of hard work customer loyalty, and getting the job done perfection each and every time. Perhaps best of all, they use only the finest quality roofing products, such as Owen's Corning Roofing System. Visit them today at www.heatleyroofing.com or call them at 330-722-ROOF. Sada Trophy has been a staple of the Northeast Ohio community for over 40 years for all your trophy and celebration needs. Their trusted company is on time and completes the work of perfection every time. This is the number 4335 Rocky River Drive in Cleveland. Also, Game Day Tavern. If you're looking for a place to celebrate the big game, check out Game Day Tavern in Brook Park 
15119 Snow Road. They offer large flat screens, the hottest bartenders, drink specials, trivia nights, local bands, open mic night, and everything you'd want in a great tavern, including the wildly popular Queen of Hearts. Here to talk to you about Cobus Insurance, Cleveland Fitness Club, and Jenny's Popcorn, my man, Eli Winningham. Hey, what's going on, boxing fans? Jenny's Popcorn, in case you haven't heard of it, they're a family-owned tradition that has been serving customers in Northeast Ohio and beyond for 65-plus years. You can find their flavors anywhere popcorn is sold, including Giant Eagle and Marks, and I'm sure some other places as well. Visit them online at jennyspopcorn.com or in person at 38727 Taylor Parkway, North Ridgeville, Ohio, 44035. That's 38727 Taylor Parkway, North Ridgeville, Ohio, 44035. And while you're checking out popcorn, you might as well head on over to our friends at Rocket Fizz Candy to cure your sweet tooth needs. Rocket Fizz Candy has you covered with everything from your childhood to today. They didn't miss a beat putting together this magnificent display of candy and soda paradise. I promise you, I've been through it. They really didn't miss a beat. You can visit them at 530 Euclid Avenue. That's 530 Euclid Avenue, Suite 22B, 22B, Cleveland, Ohio, 44115. You know, Eli, that's all well and great. But you know I'm Italian, Vincenzo Paisan. Where can I go for a really good Italian dinner? I'm glad you asked, Vince. If you're looking for a place to enjoy a post-game or post-fight meal, or maybe you just want to enjoy a nice night out with a lady, maybe even, and you love Italian food or her Italian, I guess those don't, you don't have to be both. You can also just love Italian. But nonetheless... Frankie's Italian Cuisine has you covered from meatball to lasagna. Visit them tonight at 4641 Great Northern Boulevard. That's 4641 Great Northern Boulevard in North Olmsted. And get a hold of some spaghetti and meatballs. How about that? That's awesome. And if you need your house repaired or your office, whether it's indoor or outdoor, they do plumbing, they do it all. That it's Mullins Constructions. We'll be back with more fights. Back here for Keon Sports Battle in the Ballroom 28. Eli Mooney, I'm with you. Vince McKee, though you heard his beautiful voice announce and reads, will not be weather for this next fight. He'll join us momentarily. But for this next fight, I'm honored to have a special guest at this time. Battle in the Ballroom's 152 male champion, Brody Stanford. Brody, how you doing, man? Good, how you doing, Eli? I'm doing good, man. It's been a really good night of fight so far, you know, we had two, so it's kind of hard to judge early on, but, you know, the first one was really fun between Nugent and Mendez, yeah. and you were in the corner for Mendez, yep, yep. and then you had Hill and Brown last, just went on, um, one of the ones we won't have aired on the podcast, but still a pretty fun fight. Yeah, two really good action-packed fights, I'm excited to see this next one. Absolutely. It's going to be between Charles White out of MJ Zone, that's Michael J Zone Recreation Center in Cleveland, Ohio, and Zane Fry. Yeah, out of Columbus, Ohio, he's fighting independent. So after a 132-pound bout between Nugent and Mendez in the novice division, we'll have the sub-novice, 178 pounds. So a little bit heavier, a little bit bigger, boys, but so around the neck of the woods for you, Brody. You know, around. Oh, yep, yep. I fought a fight at light heavyweight before. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Fair enough. This one in the 178 pounds. So we'll head up to Paul's show for a moment and get the official introductions. Tiny, down in the red corner, he represents the Michael J. Zone Recreation. Please welcome Charles White. And his opponent, boxing out of the blue corner. He is an independent or of a test. He is from Toledo, Ohio, Zane Fry. All right, so the two boxes meet in the middle. We'll go over the rules and Brody, what's even said in there? Um, what's said in there when you're meeting right before the fight? You know, keep it clean. You know, just uh, let's have a good fight and touch them up. Do you ever talk to your opponent before the fight? No, nah, I just stare at him. Okay, <laughs> I guess I would do the same. Yep. Here we go. White and Fry. White in the red corner. Fry in the blue. The black trunks with red piping for the red corner white. Black trunks with white piping for for white rather. And then in the red piping is Fry. My apologies. So Fry in the red piping with black trunks. White piping, black trunks for white. All right, here we go. A attempted by Fry gets met with a left hand there by Charles White. Both and guys starting off throwing big shots. Early on here, up against the ropes. And it seems like early on, Zane Fry is getting a little bit overwhelmed by Charles White and his aggressive nature. Tries to land a left there, can't land on the straight. Comes in head first and almost does like a double punch maneuver. Doesn't land nothing and we're near the end of the round. 
It's going to be quick rounds in this one. That was a quick round. One yeah. minute rounds. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's going to be a quick one, Brody. As Fry landed a brush off left end. We'll keep it here because of the short rounds. What did you see early on in that one? Obviously quick rounds, Brody, but what did you see early on? I give the first round uh, red just by the fact that he was being the aggressor, throwing bigger, cleaner shots. So I definitely give the first round to white. Okay. Yeah, I mean, early on it just seemed like it's, it's hard with these rounds being so short sometimes. But Fry seemed a little overwhelmed. Would you agree that White being the aggressor almost seemed to throw Fry off mentally for what he was going to do? I agree. Okay. So we'll take a quick break here. Round two coming on up. Battle of the Ballroom 28, Charles White, Zane Fry. Round two, Battle of the Ballroom 28, Keon Sports here to call it. Eli Muniam with Battle in the Ballroom 20, or excuse me, Battle in the Ballroom 152, male uh, champion Brody Stanford. And right out of the gate, Zane Fry swinging wild, didn't seem to connect on any of the punches too much. Fry throwing really big shots now. And the referee gonna wave it off here. What are they waving off here, Brody? Is it something with the gloves? No. Uh, his glove touched the canvas. So okay. He, okay. He slipped, so. He has to wipe his gloves so nothing gets in his eye. Gotcha. Okay. So momentarily, a moment rather to stop in the action, a momentary stop. And both, immediately, oh, go ahead, Brody. Both guys throwing big wild shots. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing a lot here. It seems like no, neither guy is really precise with their shots. A nice left straight there by Boy, nice Yeah. And it just seems like both guys are trying to establish something offensively. Final 10 seconds of another quick round, as it will be quick rounds in this fight. Sub novice division, as we mentioned, and that'll bring an end to round two. All right, two quick rounds, Brody. We'll keep it here again. Once again, I give the uh, the round to White. I think he um, established the jab very good in that fight. From Fry, he's throwing big shots, but they're wild, so he's able to get hit with straight punches. And a lot of guys, it seems like, have trouble. Move. It seems like it's, it's, it sounds funny to say, but it's like it seems to have trouble moving when they're trying to land combinations or something where they have to ex exert a lot of energy. I mean, what is that just come with practice at that point? Yeah, I mean, you just, when I'm fighting, I don't want to have to worry about my conditioning. I want to have to worry about my skills. I, I want to be fighting all, all the rounds with not even having to worry about none of my conditioning because I come prepared. So... If I'm white, I'm going to throw straight punches this whole round and beat him with them because he's throwing haymakers. That'll be an interesting thing to watch out for here in round three. Charles White out of Michael J's own wreck and Zane Fry, an independent fighter out of Columbus, Ohio. Round three in this 178-pound sub-novice sub division fight. And we're going to get ready one more time here. I believe we're going to have a stop match. There's some wet liquid on the surface of the mat, so they wipe it up and we get going. Round three. Here we go, right out of the gates. They touch up, and then a few body shots. Oh, did a head there straight goes punches. Charles White. Yeah. Straight punches. Just like Brody Stanford mentioned, a, a straight punch yep. right there by White, and he does it again, and he lands another left. Fry seemed to be bothered. He had the headgear pulled a little bit, fixes it up, and he continues to open his arms wide, Brody. Yes, and that's straight punches will destroy that. Hands down of Fry, maybe fatigue setting in just a minute. White but, but swings White, and misses. White has to be careful because Fry's throwing really hard shots. Fry backing up against the ropes. White hits a right to the side of the head. The final 10 seconds of this fight. They'll stand. Nobody trading. A step there by Fry, but I think they're going to let it run out. Left. Yep, a nice jab there, as you mentioned, Brody, by White. And that brings the fight to a close. So we'll come back with the official decision. We'll keep Brody here for a moment to the official decision, and then we'll find out. Is it Charles White or is it Zane Fry? Brody, who do you have before we go to the decision? I definitely have White winning the fight um, based on the clean punches, clean straight punches he was landing. Uh, Fry wasn't, he was throwing hard shots, but they just weren't landing clean on him, and uh, straight punches down the pipe were able to open, or beat that opening. Absolutely. Wise words from Brody Stanford, the Battle of the Ballroom 152 male champ. We'll take a pause for a moment. Decision coming up next. Back at Battle of the Ballroom 28, Keon Sports here with you, D.I. Mooneyam, and Brody Stanford, the Battle in the Ballroom 152 male champ. We're going to head up to Paul Schill, the official ring announcer for the decision. Charles White and Zane Fry. We'll find out who gets the win in their bout. Here we go. 
Red in corner, Charles White. And there it is, Charles White, your winner by decision over Zane Fry in our third bout of the evening. And Brody, like you said, you really didn't see it a confusing decision there. Yeah, I, I definitely think that was a one-sided fight. Uh, I agree with the decision. So Brody Stanford gives us some wise words in this fight. I believe Vince McGee is trying to fight for another fight for you to call. If not, I want to say thank you for your time. Best of luck the rest of the way. you got a long career going ahead for you. you got a lot of stuff going on. And uh, if people want to follow you, find it. Where do you want, where do you want them to go? If I want to social media, wherever. Oh, is there anywhere where they need to find you? Brody underscore Stanford at Instagram. Okay, there it is. Boom. Go follow the man. All right, Brody, thanks so much. Yeah, thank you. And we're back. Vince McKee lost side. Eli Mooningham. Eli Mooningham doing a phenomenal job on play-by-play -play tonight. He's going to take you the rest of the way, and I will do my best not to screw it up too much on color. Wow. Thank you, Vince. That was probably the most ringy endorsement we've had since we've been friends, and we've been friends for... Coming on four years. Holy smokes. Friends, acquaintances, you know. Something guys, like that. <laughs> this, these next, uh, this next fight is brought to you by MDG Flooring. They are located in Medina. Steve Walbaugh and the guys do a great job. MDG Flooring, you've been hearing us talk about them all year. You know how to get a hold of them. 330-725-5252. Also, Charlie the Painter, the Workout Factory, and Middlefield Nutrition. All right. Thank you, Vince. We're going to keep the action rolling along. Bout four, Caleb Rivera out of Pride Boxing in Dunkirk, New York, will gear up against, against Hamza Imad Abadrabo out of Strong Style in North Elmstead, Ohio, where, where Vince McKee is around his neck of the woods. Now, I've seen Abadrabo fight numerous times. This kid is a gunner. I mean, he is ripped. His, his arms are made of stone. I mean, he can come out. He's going to try to mix it up early. He's going to try to put it over early, too, Eli. It'll be an interesting thing to watch here in this 152-pound novice division fight. Longer rounds than we had the last round, or the last fight, sub-novice between Charles White and Zane Fry. We'll have a little bit lengthier rounds, and we'll see how both fighters adapt. This will be the second strong-style fighter. We always notice that their presence is strong in these cards, Vince. Uh, I mean, what is it about strong style that makes them so good? Everyday training. I mean, it, it's a larger facility, and, you know, I'll call it. It is what it is, and I'm just going to come on the broadcast, and I'm going to say it. When you have the money coming in that strong style does, they could hire full-time trainers. They could hire people to be there, the best in the state to train. It's a powerhouse for a reason, Eli. That's one of the reasons. I'm not saying their trainers don't do a great job because they do an excellent job. But, again, when you get a guy like Steve Miocic training there, yeah, Jessica, I trained there for many years. It's going to bring in the names. It's going to bring in the trainers. It's going to bring in the money, quite frankly. And that, that's what you're going to get. Absolutely. So as Vince, I mean, and I agree. I, Vince put it pretty eloquently there. And I agree to a T. They do a good job there at Strong Style. And they have the resources to do so. And nobody should train them for having the resources. I mean, they... Stipe Miocic was working hand-in-hand -hand with Strong Style to get to where he's at. Now they reap the benefits. So kudos to them. Absolutely. He'll see Rivera out of Dunkirk, New York. Not much known about Rivera, but we'll see what goes on here. Dunkirk, New York. And again, fans joining us, thank you. We want to let you know, if you own a small business, we have those 2020 packages coming up for sponsorships. Contact Eli Mooningham or myself, Vince McKee, at CoachVin14 at Yahoo.com. And Eli, real quick before the bell, where can they reach you? That's E-L-I-M-O-O-N-E-5 at gmail.com. That's Eli Moon 5 at gmail.com. So let's get it going underway. Abadrabo Rivera. Abadrabo in the blue, Rivera in the red, and they come out. Rivera charges forward, and immediately they're feeling each other. Oh, nice straight left there, a jab there by Abadrabo, and he sends Rivera to the mat. He brought his head down first, and Abadrabo just laid him to the side and avoid the clinch. Yeah, that was definitely a slip, not a knockdown there, but a, a good start for Abadrabo. Rivera trying to work that left jab. Abadrabo backs up. 
now he lands a nice tight one-two combo up here against the bottom left corner. And Rivera will circle himself out, gets hit with a shot that glides, glides off his headgear. Now fall with a little mini jab there by Abadrabo, just feeling it out. And now he backs up and avoids anything. And that's something we're seeing early. Abadrabo is doing a really good job of circling the pace, uh, or circling and controlling the pace of this fight, Vince. And it almost reminds me a little bit of a guy, not to go across in the MMA world, but Alexander Gustafson. He's very smart about getting his punches in and getting out. Well, yeah, he looks confident, too. You know, I mean, even on the slip, he looked confident, stood over his opponent for a second there. And he's really controlling the ring right now is Abarabu. And again, Eli, he just really, he has that left at home. Anytime he wants it, that straight left that at this point Rivera can't seem to figure out a way to stop it. We'll see if he makes the adjustments between rounds. As Vince mentions, we'll keep an eye on that throughout the fight. Abarabu fakes up high now, tries to land a left and hits clean there on the nose of Rivera and now the two will get locked up in a clinch up against the ropes near the broadcast booth and the referee will break them up call for breaking the action and now resume final 10 seconds of the round Abadrabo hits a left continues to charge forward they tie up body shots by both men broken up by the referee and that should bring us to an end of round one and it does. Round one in the books, Abadrabo and Rivera. Round two coming next. And a quick shout out to our girl over there, Alice Atlanta, judging right there, Eli. Absolutely. Absolutely. A lot of familiar faces here in the ballroom, the Slovenian National Ballroom here on a brisk, but still enjoyable November fall day. Battle in the ballroom 28, Eli Munia and Vitsuki back with you. Round two between Hamza Imad, Abadrabo, and Caleb Rivera. And right now, Abadrabo's got Rivera up against his bottom right turnbuckle. And lands some key punches in it. Now they're tumbling into the ropes. Rivera goes head down and gets Olaid again. And, and Abadrabo is getting reprimanded here by the referee, saying you cannot continue to push your head down. Yeah. And Vince, it seems like he was saying something as well to Rivera. And not only that, Eli, you hate to see it, but he's kind of talking a little smack, standing over him. That's the second time I've seen him do that. He's too good of a fighter to pull that kind of nonsense. This is the amateurs. It's about respect. He's, he's dominating this fight. He can't pull that kind of stuff. Well, it looked like the referee also did mention something to Rivera about keeping his head up. We'll keep an eye on that as the contest unfolds. Oh, Rivera stumbles, loses his footing of his right foot. And Abadrabo was able to capitalize for a moment. Now brings it back to the center of the ring. Rivera puts his head down, and the referee is going to call a stop to the fight again. Momentarily, he says, bring your head up. Rivera continued to charge like a bull. That's why I continue to say the Ole, because it's literally like a bull in a matador. He's continued to just shuffle to the side of Zabadrabo and get out of the way. Yeah, absolutely. You know, he's, he's got to cut that out. And uh, Rivera's just going to keep, like you said, coming in like a bull and get smashed. He's got to be more careful. Unless he lands a, a, a hard body shot out of nowhere right here, he's losing this fight. Abadrabo's having his way with him. He just can't do anything stupid at this point. Broken up again here by the referee. Rivera comes in and catches a right for his troubles. Another flush punch there. Doesn't land too hard, but followed up by a body shot, and that continues to be the name of the game for Abadrabo. Action, action, action. Final 10 seconds of the round. Rivera hits a clean shot to the left after the body shot. Probably the cleanest of the fight for him. He has Abadrabo backing up. Another left hook. A left hook, a right. And that brings round two to an end. And Rivera... Stares in the face of Abadrabo. Standing eight, Eli. Standing eight. Referee still trying to call. This will be a standing eight. Wow. Yeah, it looked like the round was brought to an end. My partner, Victor Key, catches it. Abadrabo gets a standing eight. Gets checked. That's the end of the round. But also to bring no as Abadrabo responds. is confused by the eight count, but he was in trouble. Rivera did a, a stop with his right foot, almost like, all right, let's go to the plate. And honestly, with not much action besides the end, I don't know, Rivera might have stole that round. He stole that round for sure. You know, I said it mid-round there, Eli. Madrabi was dominating that round. All of a sudden, he got a little cocky. He took five or six shots left of his chin over and over again. Then, like you just said, the flurry at the end by Rivera, all of a sudden, and we're sitting next to a judge, but in my eyes, all of a sudden, what seemed like a 2-0 dominant fight is now 1-1 because of what we saw there in the closing seconds. We shall see how this one 
finishes up. Caleb Rivera out of Dunkirk, New York in the red. Hamza Imad Abadrabo out of Strong Style in the blue. Dunkirk, or excuse me, Rivera out of Dunkirk, New York in Pride Boxing, that is. So he came all the way from New York. My dad just came back from New York, Vince. There you go. Safe so, travels, I hope. Well, he's back home, so we're all good. Good, good. <laughs> I'll tell you, Rivera wants this one. I think something really ticked him off. Now he comes charging out again. Yeah, he charged, as Vince mentions, and he eats a few shots to the head for doing so. Gets rubbed up against the ropes. The break. The referee calling for boxing adamantly. A nice left there by Rivera. Gets blocked there. A few shots by Abadrabo. And they'll try to time up their hand respectively. Rivera misses with a left hook lunging. Continues to stay crouched, Vince. And it seems like that's avoid, uh, eliminating body shots. Yeah, no doubt about it. Both guys ultra aggressive to start this third round. I think they both feel it's anybody's fight right now. And here we go again, Eli. Another locked up here. Up against the ropes near the broadcast booth and circling out of this way is Rivera. He lands a punch in the face and another one of Abadrabo. Bats him up. Lands a nice left there does Rivera. He lands a right. Abadrabo has a look of panic in his face. He throws a right to try to buy some time. But this is starting to swing in the direction of Caleb Rivera. I'll tell you, this fight is one big punch from being over. Both these guys can end it at any second and they are both throwing caution to the wind here. Eli, I gotta say, I'm just enjoying sitting back and watching this. Best fight of the night by far right now. It has been a fun one, a tight jab there by Rivera. They'll get cinched up and broken up. Here we go again. Rivera hits a nice left over the block of Abadrabo right through his guard there. And now he tries to follow up, ducks underneath and gets caught with a hand over his around his neck and it was a good job by Abadrabo to land a few key punches oh. in their tight but a nice follow up by Rivera Rivera's having his way with that left hand anytime he wants it final 10 seconds of the fight Rivera charging in forward Abadrabo evading pressure tries to throw a strong left does not land Rivera says there isn't anything you could throw or something of that I'm not a lip reader but it was something not nice that you probably wouldn't say in front of your mother holy smokes that turned into a barn burner, I'll tell you. That first round was all Abarabu. Um, first half of the second round was him too. And all of a sudden, flip a dime, here came Rivera. Something, I, hey look, I'll just say it. When somebody stands over you twice, you get pissed. And then, and then you come back. Anger definitely fueled the second and third round of, third rounds rather, of Caleb Rivera. But will Hamza Imad Abadrabo hang on? Strong style looking to go to 2-0 tonight. Dunkirk, New York looking to bring home a winner. We'll take a quick pause. Kian Sport, Bail the Ball 28. Back after this. I'm going to move my phone off so it's easier. That was a good one. That was a really good one. Boxing Bail is a three action background. The new winner, he fights out of the blue corner. corner is Hamza Imad Abadrabo all strong style. They're 2-0 on the night. And Rivera despite the valiant effort will head back home to New York with an L unfortunately for him. What a fun fight Vince. And I, you might have even heard me while the announcer was being made. I was like that was a good fight. I had to tell everybody next to me that was a good fight. That was fun. Uh, no doubt about it. Definitely you know four or five fights in right now. That is a strong contender for fight of the night. You're listening to Kia Sports. Com. Up next here on Keon Sports, it'll be Isaiah Pellet versus Adam Delgado. And we are now looking uh, at our next sponsor. The sponsor of this fight will be Game Day Sportswear. We're going to go to get the latest gear for your favorite school or team. That's just pretty easy. Game Day Sportswear in New Franklin. They have you covered and they're decked out in your favorite team's gear head to toe. This is in the day. Find out what they can do for you, what they have made for you. www.shopgameday.net or in person, 941 West Nemesilla Road in New Franklin. Check them out today and every single time. Well, and Rain Barrels and More. Go ahead. Thank you, Vince McGee. Let's get the Rain Barrels and More for the very best 
and not only rain barrels but also CBD oils. Look no further than rain barrels and more. They are located at 1350 Moore Road in Avon. That's M O O R E Road, Moore Road in Avon. Or you can call them at 440 666 6577. That's 440 666 6577. Or email at Ann, that's A N N, at Rain Barrels N, the letter N, more.com. Make sure you check out Great House Cleaning LLC as well. Their top priority is customer service and ensuring that people that the people that hire them are not only satisfied but wowed by their service. Great House Cleaning offers free estimates. They clean houses weekly, bi monthly, monthly, and as needed. Contact them today. Contact them today at 216 375 8460. 216 375 8460. We'll get to some more sponsors a little bit later on in the evening. We have many more fights. This is about six of the evening, Vince McKee. And it's between Isaiah Pellet of Empire BC, that's Empire Boxing Club out of Cleveland, Ohio, and Adam Delgado out of Old School Iron Gym in Cleveland, Ohio. It's a 125 pound sub novice division fight. So it'll be shorter rounds. And in these shorter rounds, what do you really look for? Well, you know, these are, are like you said, not only shorter rounds, but lighter fighters. There's going to be a lot of speed. You know, you, you might end up sounding like Daffy Duck by the time this one's over. You're going to talk 100 miles per hour because I do know at 125, it's all speed. You know, you don't see a ton of knockouts. You, you see uh, guys just pile up the points at this weight. Quickness. We'll see what happens. We'll take it up to Paul Schill for a moment and come back with some. All right, so it's Pellet in the red gloves, blue corner in the blue gloves, Delgado. Eli Mooney and Vincent Key with Keon Sports here with you for Battle of the Ballroom 28. Thanks for joining us, everybody. And away they go. A nice left on the chin there by Delgado, rather by Pellet, excuse me. Delgado follows back with a nice lunging right. Right, right. Nice right that one square, man. You, you did. See, you know, you normally you see guys lunge, but now he's getting caught. Yeah, I mean, it was a really nice punch, Vince, but Pella is just so fast. That's something I'm seeing immediately. You know, you talk about the speed, but where Delgado is just so lanky, Pella's short and stout. Yep. And right now, he's instead of here's my handle, here's my that, uh, my spout, it's here's my jab and here's my left hand. Like he just he's coming in with everything. I mean, no doubt about it. I mean, the pellet is like you said, he, he's jacked though. He might be short and stop, but he's absolutely jacked. And when he hits you, he's gonna make it count. Now the referee calling a pause. Eli, Eli it looks like something with the headgear. Yeah, I think it's his braids. I think he wants his hair tucked in. So I'm not really. I don't have long enough hair yet. In a few months, call me. I might. But I'm assuming there is more of a hair issue. They don't want to get it caught or something yeah. along the lines of that. Like, you know, crazy things have happened. And like you said, it looks like Delgado, you know, the early lunge and early connection. But since then, it really has been all pellet. The next 45 seconds was just pellet, you know, no pun intended, pelling it away. I mean, just, just chipping, bang, bang, bang. No, absolutely. It's been a really weird opening of this round. And they're going to be fast because they're faster rounds, shorter rounds. So... I mean, for Delgado, right now you got to kind of figure down. it out. Yeah, okay. slow down and figure it out. So they're going to resume after Delgado gets fixed up with his head gear. And the final 10 seconds of the round. A nice left there by Pellet. He gets Delgado in the corner. He's teed up. They're trading. They're trading. Pellet to the head. The referee stops it. And that's the end of the round. My goodness. Woohoo! Wow is all I can say. Wow. Round two awaits. Holy smokes. Back here at Battle in the Ballroom 28, Eli Mooney and Vince McKee for Keon Sports. It's Isaiah Pellet out of Empire Boxing Club and Adam Delgado out of Old School Iron Gym. Delgado in the blue, Pellet in the red. And Eli, right off the bat here, I'm seeing Pellet just trying to line it up. He came out in a crouch, and you just you can tell he's looking for the big one. Here we go again. Hit a nice body shot with the right. Hits the left and the right, and Delgado evading the damage, but not enough for the referee to give him an eight count. Delgado throws his hands up, wasn't really happy with the call, but he's going to have to get to the official's command here, and he does. Fight will continue. Pellet right back to it, quick, in a crouching manner. Hits a nice left, 
Delgado trying to trade on the ropes, but he's on the other end. Nice shot to the head there by Pollock. He continues. A three-piece combo, and it's a standing eight count. Will Delgado answer the count? It's to seven. It's to eight. And they're going to let him box again. One more time, they'll stop it. There's the round anyways. Woo! My goodness, that's the end of a round. Really headlined by Isaiah Pellet. We had to a third. And we're back. Battle in the ballroom, 28 key on sports. Eli Winnie on Vince McKee. Isaiah Pellet and Adam Delgado going right to where they left oh! off. Round three. And I think that was a slip, Vince. As he hit him while he was down. I didn't catch that. Wow. No, here, I'm sorry, Eli. Go ahead, but it's a standing eight. Delgado gets the standing eight, but then Delgado hit him when he was down. The referee didn't see it. Watch out. Yeah, they just continue to trade. The referee called for a stop. The referee called for a stop, and both fighters getting very frustrated. But they have just been continuing to fight and go at it. I think they're taking a point away for not listening to the command. Eli, I'm going to sit back and watch this. This is unreal right now. Yeah. Oh! Hard right there by Isaiah Pellet. He's going to call him over to the corner. Unbelievable. And he's going to need them fix the headgear again. It's going to stop what has been an action-packed fight thus far. But once again, Adam Delgado will need to fix something with his hair. But right now, out of that third round, you mentioned it, Vince. We got right to the broadcast and immediately... I think Delgado caught him with a slip. He didn't yeah. hit him. And then, as you mentioned, which I missed, he hit him with a shot on the ground, which is, you just can't do that. But he both fighters have been not heeding the referee's calls. It's been a wild, wild fight. This is a shootout right now. Lunging towards the body and missing. There's Delgado blocked by Pellet. He gets right back in the familiar spot and up against these ropes near the bottom left corner turnbuckle. He hits him with a body shot, misses on a sliding right. Delgado's getting his head jacked back and forth. Final 10 seconds, broken up for a minute. Here comes Pella, nice left, trying to follow the right. And that should do it, it does. Delgado, Pella, fight to a finish. We'll find out who wins next. Back here at Battle of the Ballroom, 28. It's the official decision between Isaiah Pella and Adam Delgado. We're excited to hear who's going to win this thing. Eli Winnie and Vince McKee for Kia Sports. We're going to send it over to Paul Schill, the official re announcer. I think Pellet has now. it. I'm sorry, I think Pellet has no, it. No, you're good. I was going to ask you. I thought we were going to get it. Real quick, what do you got? Who do you got? I got to go with Pellet, too, bro. I got to go with Pellet, too. It was All a right, fun here one. Go. Here we go. Paul Schill, the honor, and the ring is yours. Baby action once again in the ring. One more time, give it to the guys. Up, baby action. Boxing fans, this is three action pass around. Great fighting. Boxing fans, he's your winner. Boxes out of the red corner. Yep. So we lie, the judges agree with us on that one. Yes, Isaiah Pilot, your winner out of Empire Boxing Club in Cleveland, Ohio. He defeats Adam Delgado out of Old School Iron Gym. We'll take a quick pause. Coming up. It's boxing versus MMA. That's right. Taylor Adair, a mixed martial artist from Softball Boxing Club in Columbus, Ohio, will take on boxer Jordan Grusheski on a strong style, looking to go 3-0 in the night. Will they? Find out next. And the next three fights will be brought to you by Helene Kia, Hosier Hockey, and Soccer Shots. If you want to be a sponsor, email me, Vince McKee, at coachman14 at yahoo.com. Right back we come. Battle in the ballroom 28. Back here is Eli Moody and Vince McKee for Keon Sports. And we have, as we mentioned, Jordan Grzewski, excuse me, Grzewski out of Strong Style and Taylor Adair out of Columbus, Ohio. We mentioned boxing and MMA. It'll be an interesting one, Vince. Yep, like you said, Grzeski in the red, and a deer in the blue. Okay. Both guys got tattoos on their arms. That's a very, very good analysis to begin this a one. That's a observation there. All right, Grzeski in the red, wearing all black trunks, and a deer 
in the blue wearing all white trunks. Pretty easy to distinguish this one. So they begin. Adair, the MMA fighter in this one. Guzuski, the boxer, in this fight. Immediately early on, Adair trying to avoid some punches early. Gets clinched up in the ropes. And he'll throw a few, doesn't land. Now it backs up from a few body shots from Gruszewski. You know, you'll have, you know, a lot of times you'll oh, see yeah, an MMA you guy, you know, we saw with Gerald Spahn a lot of times. Foot, you know, yeah. they're going to stick with MMA their entire career, but sometimes they take some of these boxing matches just to really work on their striking game. Absolutely, and you know what? Right now, Adair doesn't look like he doesn't belong in this ring. He looks very much well, so like he does. He's stuck in a predicament right now. Landing some heavy rights to the side of the head was Gruszewski. And now, he'll continue to press forward. Adair... Oftentimes, right now, the less aggressor of the two, he tries to throw an overhand right, which is technically legal as long as it doesn't land on the top of the head. Doesn't connect on anything but a blocked glove by Krasuski, but very unconventional. He's got to live the low blow there, too. I thought I heard the 10 seconds, but I guess not. That must have been something else I heard in the crowd. A lot of applause here in the Battle in the Ballroom, Slovenian National Ballroom, and a sold out crowd. It's somebody behind us. Yeah, put it out of joint when he's switching. Tell me this did As Vince is losing his mind, here comes Grzewski. He is continually getting confused on stoppages here as he feels like the referee's stopping and then he backs up. Here he comes. That shouldn't be allowed. Come on, dump that right hand. Both guys slowing down right now. There it is. There's the 10 seconds. Yep. There goes Adair. He lands a nice jab, but followed the other way was Grzewski. Final 10 seconds, a swing in to the body is Gruszewski. He lands a nice right to end of the round, and that brings round one to an end. Vince will try to find his bearings and try to make sure he's not going crazy. And uh, we'll head to round two after this. Back at Battle of the Ballroom 28, Keon Sports, Eli Mooney and Vince McKee with you. The second round between boxer Jordan Gruszewski and mixed martial artist Taylor Adair. Adair out of South Pole Boxing Club. Grzewski out of Strong Style. This is a boxing versus MMA match. A boxing match, that is. And right now, it has been there you go, Jordan. a feeling there you out go. process of sorts. Adair continues to work in, but then doesn't throw much. And right now, Grzewski is just kind of, it seems like he's just not letting the glove fly. Yeah, both guys look a little hesitant right now, no doubt about it. As far as that first round go, I probably would definitely give it to Grzewski. He's been out boxing him, but really, neither guy doing a ton of damage to Zeddy. Charging forward was Grzewski, nothing to come of it. And Adair tries to land with a slide by left. Nothing here, faint and high with the left is Grzewski. And the two will continue to eye each other down. A right block there by Grzewski from the hand of Adair. Yeah, both guys, again, I mean, not to repeat myself, but both guys looking a little hesitant here. And you gotta figure the boxer here, Grzewski, really just needs to stick to his game plan, Eli. Don't let that slow style of Adair throw you off. Yeah, you know, it is interesting to fight an MMA fighter in a boxing match, but it's not like you can use any of the takedowns or submissions or anything else that you learn in mixed martial arts. Like right there, bring it up. Adair just goes for a double leg takedown. He apologizes to the ref, says, I am sorry. <laughs> and maybe he'll get the benefit of the doubt considering he is a mixed martial artist. Yeah. But they stop that immediately. Krasuski gets caught with a left right there by there. Another right. Now he goes for a right uppercut because Krasuski misses just by a blade of grass. And they'll break up out of the clinch. I'll tell you though, I do like what I'm seeing out of Adir. I mean, I'll say, I think he is losing this fight at this point, but he definitely shows a lot of promise right now. Adair lands a nice hit to the side of the head. A nice mini left uppercut there. Now hits some body shots, goes up high to the head, hits another left, and gets out of damage for a minute, clinches up. And another win there in that battle between Adair and Krasuski. And it's a tight one going into round three, Vince. Yeah, no doubt about it. It's interesting to see the way this plays out in the third. I liked what I saw out of Adair late. Once he went for that failed uh, double-A takedown, after that, he really stepped it up, actually. I don't know if it's a ploy, if it's a plan, or whatever, but it certainly opened him up. It's almost like, all right, let the hands fly now. He got his one double-A in that he needed. He didn't get to finish it from a boxing ring, but I don't know, maybe that felt like home to him for a minute. Yeah, I mean, neither, like I said, neither guy is dominating this fight by any stretch. I, I would make a case 
for Guziski that he's won both rounds. The second one just barely. But honestly, I mean, it's gonna be real interesting. This third round to see really steps it up. Neither guy has been all that impressive. I'll, I'll just flat out say it. So we'll, we'll see what the third round brings. It will be an interesting one to keep an eye on. Brzezuski looking to get strong style to 3-0 tonight. They are 2-0 off the wins of Jake Nugent in the first bout of the evening. And in the fourth bout, it was Hamza Imad Abadrabo defeating Caleb Rivera in a spirited contest. And they also got Muggy Harding coming up fighting for a title before the night's over. So four to be exact on the card. This is the third. It is Brzezuski. He looks for a left that does not land on Taylor Adair. Adair throws a flurry of rights that try to just open something up for him. Get the hand flight. He lands a nice left hook and Krzyzewski says, come on in. Adair waves him in. I think at this point the fans just want to see who's going to come in more. That was really the best exchange of the match so far, the bout. I mean, Adair hit it clean. Just didn't do anything to follow up though. But you know what? He's got to learn that. That MMA excuse right now, it's the third round. That MMA excuse is out the window. You got to follow up. Krzyzewski right out of the clinch had a nice body shot right above the belly button of Adair. And now he tries to continue to land shots. But Adair now using that MMA background to get some of these clinches easier than maybe some other, like some conventional yeah. boxers. And a good angle too. He only landed one punch there, but beautiful angle again by Adair. That was a three body piece combination followed up with a fourth to the head the right side of the head now he backs down Grzyzewski who's gonna run right into this clinch and look to set something up here right now Adair lands a nice straight left jab and now here comes Taylor Adair he good job out of the break there I'm sorry good job out of the break there I mean Absolutely. Adair he's learning as his fight goes I can see this kid growing as the fight goes Beautiful job, referee calls for a break, but he landed a couple coming out of that clinch. Job well done. And the final 10 seconds of this one. Adair lands some nice shots to the face, rock'em sock'em style. And he is just throwing heavy shots to the side of the head of Grzyzewski. Lands three more before the round comes to a close. And that will put this one in the books. Grzyzewski, Adair, they fight to a finish. Paul Schill will hold the card and tell us who the winner is. We'll find out momentarily. Battle of the Ballroom 28, Keon Sports. We're back after this. Back at Battle in the Ballroom 28 from the beautiful Slovenia National Ballroom. Vince McKee, Eli Muniam here with you. He's Vince McKee, I'm Eli Muniam. And in the ring is Jordan Grzyzewski and Taylor Adair. They're going to get an official decision as they fall to a finish. But Taylor Adair, not your conventional boxer, an MMA, a mixed martial artist, MMA fighter, taking on a boxer in this unconventional contest. We'll see if he did enough. And Vince, he did a lot in those second and third rounds once it got going. Yeah, I mean, kind of like I said, you know, it, it had means I get three rounds, but I would like to see a few more rounds. I liked where that was going with the deer. He didn't look all that impressive. Neither guy did, quite frankly. But I like the style of that fight of where it was starting to go. It was interesting. We'll see what they say. Here's Paul Schill. Standing action here in the ring. Please put your hands together for these two out standing athletes. Nicely done, gentlemen. Boxing fans, after three rounds, your winner boxes out of the blue corner. There it is, Eli. It goes to the MMA fighter who, you know what, we might see a future with him in boxing. We'll see. It was a lot of fun to watch Taylor Adair, especially those last two rounds. A fun fight between Grzyzewski and Adair. I guess that means, according to Paul Schill, we're going to have to take a quick pause. We're going to have an intermission here in the Slovenian National Ballroom, so it's going to be a mass exodus for about 20 minutes. When we get back in here, we're going to have plenty of fights including our main event later on, the middleweight championship of the world, Terry Damore and Adam Kazalka, who gets the goal. Also, Anthony Bizarro and Mikey Hardy. Nick Bizarro, perhaps his brother, against Carl Rave. And then the Battle of the Masters, Derek Dogwell and Ron Bellatente. Again, you are listening to KiosSports.com. And 
welcome back to Battle in the Ballroom 28. KeyOnSports.com with you, Vince McKee and Eli Muniam. Our long intermission is over. We are back and ready for action with a light welterweight championship on the line, the 141-pound title. It is going to be Anthony Bizarro out of Erie Boxing Club in Erie, Pennsylvania against Mikey Harden out of Strong Style in Mayfield Heights, Ohio is where he resides. The third Strong Style fighter to fight tonight, Vince. They're looking for, or rather the fourth fighter out of Strong Style. They're looking for a 3-1 finish tonight. Yeah, you know, and that last one they lost was Razor Thin, so he's looking to go for 4-0, but it is what it is. And this is the championship fight. It's a big one. Let's send it up to Paul Schill, the ring announcer for tonight's festivities. And his opponent representing the blue corner, representing a strong style and old school boxing from Mayfield, Ohio. Please welcome Mike Hayden. Already live, we are set to go. As you said, strong style. Looking to bring some more championship gold home. Absolutely. It'll be hard in looking to try to do that while Bizarro, the Pennsylvania native, will look to bring home some championship gold to Chocolate Town in Erie. Here we go. Right off the rip. Harden in the all white trunks, blue gloves. Bizarro in the red trunks, red gloves. Yep, two challengers going at it. We will have a champion in nine short minutes. A nice right there by Harden. He goes low to the body. Well, gets locked up in a clinch there. Looks to hit some body head, body head combination, and the referee will call a break to the action. A nice one, two, times two for Harden. Gets hit with a the left there by Bizarro. And almost a flush uppercut misses just by a few inches by Anthony Bizarro. Bizarro did land flush there on the ribs before he went for that uppercut. And he's looking to set that up early. Body, body, head. We'll see if he can do it here. Right now they're getting tied up. Oh, a punch on the break there, Eli. Yeah, they're saying out of this break that Bizarro needs to stop hooking the arm yep. of Harden. But yes, as you mentioned, Bizarro also caught a, another shot to Harden. He didn't let it anger him anything. And that's a big thing you see with strong style fighters. A nice body shot by Bizarro. Is there... Composure? Composure, yes. I absolutely sold the words right out of my mouth. I mean, besides, I mean, earlier Abadrabo didn't look that much composed and it was uncharacteristic, but Harden getting back to the basics of strong style. Gets Bizarro up in a corner here. Hits a right, now gets locked with a left elbow hook by Bizarro. Will throw some body shots, so break him free again and let him get back to boxing. Yeah, and I couldn't agree more with that point. Very well said, Eli. I tend to have a few of those every now and then, Vince, as we get back to the boxing between Bizarro and Harden. Light welterweight title on the line in the 141 pound division. Here comes Harden in the blue, swings with a left, misses, and gets locked up for his troubles. And the referee will break them once again. Early on, it looks like Bizarro trying to establish an inside game, not letting Harden establish any reaches. We get the final 10 seconds of the round. Bizarro lands a nice right. Looks for a left, misses, and after the first one misses for Harden, he lands a nice right to end the round. That sends round one to the books. Round two, coming up next between Bizarro and Harden. Back at Battle in the Ballroom 28, it's Mikey Harden, it's Anthony Bizarro. It's a light welterweight championship on the line at the 141 pound division. It's Vince McKean, Eli Mooney, I'm back here for KeonSports.com. Round two begins, and a nice right there by Bizarro, followed up by a right of Harden. The two trade to begin the round. That exchange there was better than anything we saw in the first round. Both guys definitely got a talking to by their corners between rounds because they're coming out a lot more aggressive right now. A left hook glides off the face of Harden, but connects for Anthony Bizarro. Harden looks for that jab and might have just touched the nose of Bizarro. He goes for the body, and looks to go up on the head, almost goes to the back of the head, has to watch that. But now he walks down Bizarro here in the bottom right corner, and Bizarro wisely circles back to the yeah. middle of the ring. Yeah, Harden's looking good right now, Eli. He's coming out aggressive. He landed there again. 
He's done it multiple times. Mikey Harden doing what it takes in the second round thus far. Zara lands a right, hits more so the shoulder neck area of Harden. Harden catches oh. Bizarro, but Bizarro trades with a nice counter punch. Right to Harden, and that one helps set up a one-two body head combo for Andy Bizarro, finishing with that left hook. Yeah, now, now you see Bizarro being more aggressive. Early on it was Harden, now it's Bizarro. This round's gonna be tough to call at this pace. Both guys are picking and choosing their moments. We'll see where it goes. A clinch, breaks action momentarily. They get back to it, a nice left there by Bizarro. Avoids that left uppercut of Harden. Harden throws a right, doesn't do much damage and now gets clinched up. They're gonna keep action going. A body shot right to the ribs that Harden felt. Bizarro hit a nice right there, right to the body of Mikey Harden. They get tied up here. And it seems like Harden starting to get frustrated a little bit as we get to the final 10 of the round. A nice left there for Bizarro. Harden throwing body shots as they're locked up here. Harden making sure to stay out of this clinch, tries to slide by, goes for a big haymaker, doesn't land. That brings it to the end. Round two in the books. Light welterweight title on the line. Who wants it more? Back here for the third round between Mikey Harden out of Strong Style and Anthony Bizarro out of Erie Boxing Club. The late welterweight championship on the line at the 141 pound division. Round three underway. Vince McKee, Eli Munim here with you for KeonSports.com. Hey. You know, if, if I was going to call it real quick, but I'd say a Harden up 2 0, just barely. But I could, I had to say, I'm sorry. At the same oh, time, right. though, I could easily see it going the other way. I mean, that's how close this has been. As Vince gives his side of this fight from his point of view, we continue in the action, in the uh, with the action in the ring, that is. A nice left jab there by Bizarro. And he has Harden reaching, looking to connect on something. And it seems in a ballroom that there's been a bit of dancing Mikey Harden's way. As Anthony Bizarro is deking and dodging everything he's got in terms of heavy shots. He's got to get back to the basics as another left hook lands there for Bizarro. Yeah, great footwork out of Bizarro here. You know, he's been backpedaling a little bit, but he's not really retreating. Just excellent footwork. It's really standing out to me now in this third round by Bizarro. Bizarro finding his angles. He's making it work for him. This is going to get real interesting. Harden with a left hook taken by Bizarro as he came out angry out of that clinch. Showing a grimace of sorts. Trying to throw a few head shots, but blocked by Bizarro. He misses on a right hook. And the two will work down the left side of the ring. Two left straights by Bizarro. Harden doesn't contest either. Yep. And yep. now they get locked up here in the ropes. Yeah, Bizarro's looking good. Like you said, he's had a couple clean ones. This third round's been all Bizarro. He might steal the fight. And we'll get a mouthpiece on the mat of the ring. It'll be cleaned off and then a timeout will be called as I think we lost both mouthpieces. Oh, both mouthpieces are gone. Harden gets his in, they're gonna have to clean Bizarro. And a lot of Bizarro's followers or family, his fan base have been yelling along with his corner trying to just motivate him, telling him to pour it on, I keep hearing, in this third round. Championship minutes coming up right now. A nice strike there by Anthony Bizarro. He's had quite a few as this fight has gone on. Another left sneaks by the defensive Harden, and that one catches the side of the chin as well. We'll get a break for a moment. Final 10 seconds of championship minutes. A few left by Bizarro. Harden chases in. Another right by Bizarro. They're locked up in the ropes, and that brings this light welterweight championship about to an end. Anthony Bizarro, Mikey Harden, they fight to the finish. And Eli, I'm gonna have to put you on the spot, my man. How do you see it? I called the first rounds Harden, just barely, and I gotta get that third round convincingly to Bizarro. Bizarro looked phenomenal in that third round. This is gonna be really interesting. How did you see it? It's gonna be tough. Bizarro put a lot of strikes on Harden and started getting him rattled near the end of the fight. But Harden did some good things, body strikes engaging while in the clinch. I'd have to flip a coin on this one. Right now I'd probably go Anthony Bizarro, but we'll see. The judge will answer our question momentarily. We'll step away for a moment. Kansports.com back in just a few seconds. Uh, 
And again, you're listening to KeonSports.com. If your small business wants a 30 second commercial, email me, Vince McKee, at CoachVin14 at Yahoo.com. We'll treat you right. All right, the music comes down here in the ballroom, the Slovenian National Ballroom, and let's set it up to ring announcer Paul Schill for the official decision oh, and a new light welterweight champion of the world. Boxing fans, and your winner, and now the ballroom light welterweight champion, he boxes out of the red corner, Anthony Delzaro! Your winner, and now the new battle in the ballroom light welterweight champion of the world, Anthony Pizarro. He sneaks past. Mikey Harden of Strong Style to win the gold and send Strong Style to a final record of 2-2 two and two on the evening. They win their first two, they lose their last two. And Eli, you know, here we are. Nine fights in, nine decisions. What do you about that? I mean, all good fights, too. They have been good fights. We still have quite a few on our docket. We have Nick Bizarro. Versus Carl Rave in our heavy sub novice division. We have Derek Dardow against Ron Vellante in the Battle of the Masters, a 45 years older, older, and then our middleweight championship of the world. Battle of the Ballroom middleweight title of the line. The main event of the evening, Terry Damore, Adam Kazelka. We'll see what happens. Keonsports.com, this is the Eli Mooney M. We'll take a quick break. And welcome back to Battle of the Ballroom 28 live from the Slovenian National Ballroom. And whenever you play it, you'll be live in your ears. How about that? Kiosports.com, Eli Mooney and Vince McKee with you. And we have a good one coming up next, Vince. The heavy sub novice division. It is Nick Bizarro out of. Nico Tensity, Gary, Pennsylvania. And you have Carl Rave, Old School Iron Gym, Cleveland, Ohio native. How do you feel about this one? Well, Eli, put the women and children to bed. This is going to be a good old fashioned Downey Brook. We have not had a single knockout all night. They need to pay these judges double. They've had to make a decision every fight. Somehow, with this, I don't see it coming. This could be the knockout of the night coming up next. It will be interesting to see if Vince is right. I always tend to see him if, see if he's right or wrong. and I don't know. He, he's about 50-50 in my existence of knowing him. We'll see. We'll see what goes on. But it definitely has the power to do so in this one. I mentioned heavy sub-novice division. Bizarro Rave. And both of these guys look like they would kill me with about a quarter of a punch. An absolute quarter of a punch. And Mr. Fishing Mission himself, Paul Schill, just did the math. 650 pounds combined. More than, I pause y'all, more than. Well, I'm a key to the word. 650 combined, but more than 650, Paul Schill said. Wow. I'm just passing with you. You were close. You were close. Hey, 650. Need I remind you about the 2017 MMA predictions we made all year? I'm not going to bring that up. Someone getting a little spiteful. We might need to get to announcing pretty soon, Mr. Schill. All right. Well, without further ado. Oh. What, real quick, real quick. On a serious note, very serious. Any MMA promoters listening to this? Me and Eli are ready, baby. Call us. Give me a call. 440-728-1982 or email me. CoachVin14 at Yahoo.com. Yes, we love boxing, but me and Eli, we're itching to try some MMA, right, bud? Absolutely. So give us a ring-a-ding-ding or text us on the old, or email us on the old laptop or computer or whatever you have, a desktop, laptop, whatever it is. Let's send it to Paul Schill. 
over 650 pounds of going at it right here, right now. This is it for the big guys. And now, we are in the heavyweight division. And now, introducing out of red corner, all the way from the Erie PA, represented in Erie County, Erie Boxing Club, please welcome Nick Pizarro. And his opponent, boxing out of the blue corner, representing the old school, Iron Jim. Someone killed the mic. Paul Schill has lost his mic momentarily as he's about to announce Carl Ray. He gets it done without the microphone. What a professional Mr. Paul Schill is. He gets it done. He'll try to figure his mic issues out while we get an announcement later on. We will need that mic to work. But until then, it's going to be Rave. It's going to be Bizarro. Bizarro in the red gloves. Rave in the blue gloves. Rave wearing gold and blue trunks with ruthless, ruthless across the bottom right corner. And in the black and white trunks, white trimming that is, is Bizarro. And they come out immediately and start swinging. Bizarro lands a jab, but Rave does one is of his own. Eats a right jab, does Rave right there. And a shot to the body by Bizarro. He's watching the lunging of Rave, who's throwing his head in early. Could be a bad thing for him as this fight goes on. And I can tell right away, Bizarro looks like the much more polished fighter here. As long as he doesn't get caught, he should be able to have his weight. Bizarro looking real good early. He lands a right. Rave throws his head down. He throws another right. Rave is off balance. A right there by Bizarro to finish the action. And now he circles around Carl Rave. Up against the ropes. Bizarro avoids any attack there from Rave. Good jab there by Rave. Rave establishing his draft. Quarter man John McGinnis, following champion himself, yelling for the double up jab, and Rave's doing it now. A nice strike there by Carl Rave, but he gets teed off on, and the referee calling for the stop. And I think the referee's going to check on Carl Rave. He is a standing eight right now. They're going to see if Rave will answer the count of the referee. He's up to six. And they're going to say, let's finish what we started in the ring. Final ten seconds between Bizarro and Rave in this first round. A lockup. They break. And that brings the round to an end. Round one in this heavy sub novice division. Complete. Round two coming up. So really kind of looking into this, Eli, you know, I got to say, Bizarro looks like the better boxer, the better fighter, however you want to word it. His style is very, very good. Now, Rave has a chance, though, with his kind of size, all Rave really needs to do is land one clean shot, and he can end it. Very interesting to see where this goes. Good insight there by my good friend Vince McKee. Round two begins, and a nice right to begin the round by Bizarro. Rave swings and misses with the right. Bizarro keeping his hands up high. Rave continues to throw his head down while coming in for an attack. And eats a few punches as a result. Really the right there by Bizarro. Really much of the same, too. You see Bizarro trying to box, and Rave really just kind of slugging over that home run ball. But right now, picking and popping is Bizarro. He's looking real good, he's, but he's got to stay out of the range at the same time. Easier said than done. He caught a clean right, as Vince mentions that. And the referee is going to go to another standing eight here for Carl Rave. Will the Cleveland native answer the call? They will call time for a doctor. Rave answers the eight count, but they're going to go to a doctor and check on Carl Rave. As Nick Pizarro stays focused in that top left corner, that turnbuckle, trying to keep his eyes on this fight and keep focused. Sometimes these delays can throw a fighter off by waiting too long. Yeah, I think the doctor might stop this, Eli. Let's see. Nope, gonna let him go. Gonna let him go. So Ray will continue. Him and Bizarro get back into their corners. And they begin again. Bizarro once again in the red gloves. Rave in the blue. A nice right there by Bizarro. Followed by another right. He has another right. In his corner, calling for the finish. A flurry of punches. And that's it. 
the first finish of the night goes to Nick Bazaar. Eli said it all, a flurry. Rave couldn't get an answer. He couldn't get that one shot in to stop him. An unbelievable flurry. Got ahead to Nick Mazzaro. His team section over there going nuts for him. They made the drive to PA, and they made it for good reason. This night belongs to the Bizarros. Anthony and Nick come in. Both big wins. Impressive showing by Nick Pizarro, who just started to pour it on and found some weaknesses in the game of Carl Rave. Rave just must continue to work at this if this is what he wants to do. Because he did look on polish in areas of the game, putting his head down, swinging wildly, and with a guy like Bizarro in there, he just found the openings to continue to tee off. And then when the time was right, he laid it on him. And that caused the finish. Already two standing eights, that's the TKO finish. And, uh, you know, that's basically the gist of it. You can't continue to get standing eights, and the referee is not going to continue to allow you to continue. Yeah, we got three ring of circus going on behind us right now. I got to draw attention to it. Looks like Paul Schill has his microphone back on. This is the first good sign. What a wild Coleman's that was. That's all I can say. What a wild Coleman's. Here we go, Paul Schill. Get ready. We'll take a quick pause. The official decision between Bizarro and Rafe coming up next. Bizarro, your winner. Back at Battle on the Ballroom 28. And here comes the official decision. And there it is, your winner. By referee stoppage in the second round, a TKO for Nick Bizarro over Carl Rave. He is a winner. The Bizarro Bros cool. go 2 0. And we're just getting into it, folks. Three more left, two on our docket. It'll be. Coming up, the Battle of the Masters, Derek Dowdell versus Ron Belante in a heavy Masters division, 45 years old or older, Vince. And then, the middleweight championship on the line at 165, Terry Damore, Adam Kazelka. What are you looking forward to in any of these fights? What are you looking forward to the most? Well, I'll tell you what, Damore and Kazelka don't back down from a shootout. I would expect both guys to tee off on that one. The Masters Division, who knows? We'll see. We'll see. All right, we shall see. And with that, we'll take a quick break. KeonSports.com, Mitsuki, Eli Mooney, and Battle on the Ballroom 28 from the beautiful Slovenia National Ballroom. Back after this. We are here with Nick Bizarro, the winner of that last fight, along with Marcus. First of all, congratulations. The first knockout of the night. John, well done. Thank you. I appreciate it. This hard work. All glory to God. So I gotta say, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Vince McKee alongside Eli Mooningham here. If I could just start real quick, I mean, I said it immediately about 15 seconds into this fight. I said, you know, put size out of the picture. This kid can fight. He's more than size. A lot of times you see a big guy in there right. and he's going for a home run ball. You didn't do that. You went in there and you boxed. Tell us a little bit, Marcus, too, about his training. His training is very intense. We go six days a week. We go very hard. We go from our weight training right after. Then we go into our high and we go into our more of a higher intensity training with our resistance training. Then we get close to the fight. We go. We do a lot of our conditioning, a lot of work on the fast switch muscles, and a lot of boxing. And we and in our and the difference between our training and a lot of other trainings is obviously the intensity because we are Luco intensity, and we do spar with a lot of yes, MMA sir. fighters because they move a lot, and that's what we needed for him to do. We do so we don't do a lot of sparring with boxers. We do a lot of sparring with MMA fighters. Um, all that to say is, is, like, for my size, I move really good. I think, you know, like, I'm just different in there, and we train different. You know, I can fight just as fast as guys, like, 100 pounds less than me. And more, like, I work with my hand speed. I work with a lot of uh, MMA fighters because each time you get, like, a different style and stuff, and you got to – you have to have, like, fast hands. And coming from, like, a fighting family – you know, I got blessed with like the power, the speed, and everything. And I'm just putting it all to use by just working hard and just listening to my coach and just executing. This is the hardest working boxer in the world. I'm not putting anything on it, and I'm serious. It's the hardest training camp in the world. So, as he's getting greeted here, Marcus, and uh, I, I, I'm sure Nick can jump in here a minute too. Talk about, you know, he comes in, Rave comes in with his head down, and um, 
you know, he, he basically just seemed to be very errant the whole fight. How do you kind of train something like that? We do a lot of we do a lot of different uh, different drills for people to come forward and come backwards. And the body was open a lot, but Nick did find a weak spot up top, and he. He just went out there after that weak spot, and he found it, and he, want, he wanted to keep going. A lot of people get to the body, get to the body, but he found that weak spot upstairs, so he got to that weak spot upstairs, and that's how he handed the fight. Yep. You know, I got blessed with power and everything, and after the first few jabs I saw, I saw his, his eyes like roll back and stuff, and then I'm like, I, I know I have this guy, so I just kept on him and on him because he showed that moment of weakness and everything, and I just attacked him. So... Yeah, absolutely. No, I mean it was impressive. And after this, what are you? Are you trying to get back in the ring immediately, or what? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, you know, my goal is just to keep improving, and like, um, sometime by summer, like my goal is like, um, to go pro. So. You said you were part of a fighting family. Yeah. Is uh, Anthony your brother, cousin? He's my cousin. Awesome, man. That's yes, awesome. Yep. So I'll correct that on the broadcast. We may have thought brothers with the last name coming in from Pennsylvania. So cousins for everybody out there listening. But still, uh, I He's mean, like family. Brother to me, though. I love him to death. So <laughs> all right. Same thing. Where, where can they find you on the old social media? Uh, Thank you. Yep. You can find me on Instagram at Nick Bizarro. So you can you can find our training at Luco Tensity Training on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Luco Tensity. And that's L E W K O, and then T E N S I T Y, and then training, the regular spelling and training. Yes, it's just Luco Tensity. I'll find you tonight. Okay, and no guys, training. Yep. Look for Key on Sports. Remember this Key on Sports, because we, we're calling the fights. We called your fight. We called your cousin's fight. Yep. We want you to go back and listen to it. I, I am so impressed with what I saw. Like I said, I jumped out of my seat about 15 seconds in, and I told him, I said, you know what? The one guy, uh, your opponent, okay, Rave. Yeah, he's a big dude, and if he, if he landed on you, hey, he might have floored it, Lord knows. But I, pretty quickly I could see we had a boxer against a guy trying to land a home run ball. And just, again, very impressive. So, guys, thank you. Any last messages you want to? Let's go get I a mean, cheeseburger. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. have dedication. Cheeseburger. Yeah, let's go. All right, guys. Thanks. We trapped him in the corner here. We're not going to let him get away. Here he is, the promoter, Talk and Cade, Battle in the Ballroom 28. This place is packed. How do you feel right now? Uh, pretty good. We had a sold out crowd. We had to wait till people left to, to let more in. Uh, the fights are incredible. Uh, all the bouts are evenly matched and everybody's having a good time. And for all you tax sheets out there, Todd's going to come get you. No. No, all joking aside, for people who actually want a good person to do their taxes, where can they find you, bud? Uh, Kim Kane and Associates Tax in Westlake, Ohio. Awesome, my man. Thank you. I'm actually not taking it. And welcome back. Battle in the ballroom 28. Eli, what do you have? It's a key. key on sports.com. It's a raucous crowd right now as the Battle of the Masters is up next. Heavy weight Masters of 45 and older division right now. It is going to be Derek Dowdell out of Quality Work Boxing in Bedford, Ohio. And Ron Belante out of Against the Rope Boxing Club in Euclid, Ohio. Fits. There are signs of Derek. There are signs of Ron all across the ballroom. What are you expecting in this one? I see guys, both guys into the ring. Like in any fight or any contest, 50% of the people are going to be happy with the result. 50% of the people are not going to be happy with the result. This is going to be a fun one. My hat's off to Ty King Kane and Goddard. Bill Goddard, we just got done talking to him. It's been a hell of a night. Battle in the ballroom 28. Hey, a lot of these names we're learning for the first time tonight. But I think we're going to see him again. Eli, I think it's been a great night. What do you think? It's been a great night. And let's continue that great night by sending it up to our ring announcer, Paul Schill, for this next fight. You hear the crowd, this has a big fight feel to it in our co-main event of the evening. It's going to be Belante and Dowd out, and they're staring each other down as the referee talks it over with them. No flash photography, no 
Here we go. It'll be Dowdell in the all black trunks with white piping and the red gloves. It'll be Belante in also black and white trunks with blue gloves. So the gloves will do the best job at distinguishing the two. And right out of the gates, they trade. Here comes Dowdell with a left. Blocked by Belante. Belante ducks under. Looks for a follow-up as Dowdell head brings his head back up. No cigar there. A nice left and stumbles Dowdell by Belante. Both guys looking good. Both guys have already landed flush several times here. Flurries back and forth, back and forth. Like Eli said, rock him, sock him, robots early. A left uppercut by Belante, and he continues to press forward. Another left, he misses there. But falls over the left, and a right to the head. Another left. Oh, Ron Belante. He stumbles down out. Yeah, Belante has hit him flush three or four times right now on the chin. And he, he's landing it well. Final 10 seconds of the round. Body shot there by Dowdell to find some offense late in the round. And that's the end of the round. A wild left by Belante misses. And now head to the corners. Round two, Yami up next. Round two coming up next between Belante and Dowdell. It's coming to you in just mere seconds and we're underway. Vince McKee and Eli Muniam of KeonSports.com. Battle of the Ballroom 28. Our co-man event of the evening, a battle of the masters. Dowdell hits a nice tight right there on Belante. Hits a left and tries to follow up with the right, doesn't connect. Glides there with the right fist. Goes to the body, but Belante trying to target up top, both men. Regroup. Nice left there by Belante. And falls off on the right side of the ear. But now Dowdell will push Belante to the ropes. Belante shrugs him off. This is a true battle of grit and determination. Honest to goodness, a nice left there by Belante. A nice right, the follow by Dowdell. And he hits the surface. They'll say it's a slip. It's a slip, folks. They're going to just check and make sure he's all right. But it is a slip. Not a knockdown. Key to mention in this point of the fight, day. Yeah, I mean, both guys have had some very sloppy footwork all night, so it doesn't shock me that this happened. Final 10 seconds. The closing seconds of the round. A nice left there by Belate, and a nice left by Dowdell to finish. Two close rounds. One more to go. Dowdell, Belate, round three, coming up next. As round three begins between Dowdell and Belate, it's loud. It's very loud. Vince McKee, you like me, I'm back with you. Here we go. We're going to try to call the action as best we can over the noise. Belante tries to go for a one-two combo. Fall, starting with the left. Doesn't get that. Dowdell evades pressure. Hits a nice left. Belante misses with the right. Dowdell misses with another right. He hits a nice jab there to the face of Belante. He started to do some damage. Oh, heavy hands. By Dowdell! Belante waves off the contact and continues to throw it. But right now, Eric Dowdell is going for him. Dowdell's winning this fight. No doubt about it. Dowdell dominating this round. I'm not going to see he's dominating the fight, but he's definitely winning it. The final 10 seconds. And they'll fight to a finish. Dowdell with the right. A clinch by Belante. Another right by Dowdell. It's all to the ground as the fight comes to a close. Is it a slip or is it a knockdown? They'll say slip. And that's the fight. Official ruling by the official bitch was just chatting with them. Is they, they said it's a slip. Yeah. Nope. yeah. It's been confirmed, talking with the referee just now, definitely a slip. Alright, so that will do it for this fight. Derek Dowdell, Ron Belante go the distance. And now we wait for a winner. A quick break, but remember, you're checking out KeyOnSports.com. Battle on the Ballroom 28. And we're back. Eli, how do you see it? Vince. I gotta, I don't even know. It's so tough. It was such a tough fight. Dowdell really came over in the third and did well. Belante established the first round 
It's a coin flip. Whoever won that second wins it. Yeah, I don't know, man. I disagree. I think Goddell took all three rounds. That third round he dominated. I don't know. I, I'm going to say 3 0 Goddell, but being a fun one, regardless of who wins, that was a fun fight to watch. You know, this place is packed, standing room only. It's just amazing how many people are jammed into this tiny ballroom. You felt it there. My hat's off to both these guys. They're 37 years old. I know how hard it is to get in shape. It's almost impossible. So for these guys at 45 and over, my hat is off to them. Absolutely. We await the official decision by the official ring announcer, Paul Schill, who's done an excellent job all night long. He's going to come out and announce yet another winner at Battle on the Ballroom 28. Paul Schill, the floor is yours. Do I need to say And your winner, my decision, Derek Dowdell. So Dowdell wins the Battle of the Masters in our co main event of the evening. And he gets a title belt to show for it. He is the champion this night over Ron Belante. And as Vince McKee is generating more and more inspiration to get in the ring. Yeah, not me. Vince McKee at this point is jump. If you got folks are at home listening, he has been bouncing back and forth since the fight has ended. And I'm I'm thinking he might get in the ring very soon. Yeah, I just need to get back to my playing weight. We'll see what happens. Well, I'll tell you what. Eli, again, for Eli, this is Vince McKee. Thank you for joining us tonight. We got one fight to go. Guys, it's been a blast as 2019 comes to an end. It's been a year of dreams for Keon Sports. We've gone places we never saw coming. We'll be back in 2020. I think that much has been decided. And boxing will be a big part of what we do. But again, for you MMA promoters, let us know. We want to diversify. Main event now, man. We saw this guy last week. It stopped by Travis Charles. But he's back tonight. Terry DeMore. Let's see what he's learned against the guy we have covered countless times. Adam Kozelka. It'll be a fun one. Kozelka has been a champion in his own right before. He's looking to get yet another championship under his belt. Terry Demore, as you mentioned, tried to shake off a loss just a week ago to Travis Charles. But right now that loss doesn't mean anything because he has three rounds to go out there and prove that he is the middleweight champion of Battle of the Barroom. And I'm noticing something right now. Brian Gideon is in the corner of Terry Demore. Um, that's new. Very new, but it will definitely give Demore some help in this fight. Yeah. Brian Gideon, a very wise man in the corner of any fighter he gets into. All right. Let's send it up to Paul Schill for the official announcements. Of this fight. And now, in the red corner, the go the two men meet in the middle exchange words with the referee going over the rules and we're ready to go three rounds of championship boxing sit tight Eli Muniam and Vince McKee here with you it'll be Adam Kazoka in the American flag trunks in the blue gloves and in the red and black trunks primarily black and red gloves is Terry Demore Demore hits a body shot with a left body shot hits a nice right Gazelka eats a few shots early on. The referee will stop it and say you need to twist those fists. Nice right there by Demore, however. Yeah, both these guys can land the power shots. No mystery there. 
very similar styles as well. They're straight ahead fighters. It's going to be interesting as we again see Brian Gideon cornering Demore. What kind of adjustments he can tell him. Good fight to come. A nice right there by Gazelka. No trade. A right and a left by Demore. And he says, bring it on. A right by Demore. A shot to the body. Going for a haymaker. Misses there, does Terry Demore. But he finishes with another right. A left. And he is finding the face of Adam Kazelka with pure efficiency right now. This is the best Terry Demore I've ever seen. I've been covering his fights the last couple of years here. Obviously, Demore has learned a lot in the course of a week. This is a different kid than we saw fight week a week ago. And you hear Brian Gideon screaming, high, low, high, low, you got him hurt. This might end quickly at this pace. A body shot that comes relatively close to below the belt by Demore, but a nicely placed shot. We're going to break in the action here. Demore lands a nice follow right. It was with the backhand. His lead hand fainted. And now Kazelka trying to get into a trading match with him. And I don't know how this one's going to work out. Body shots by both men. Kazelka eats a left and a right to the left. And now they get tied up in the clinch. Kazelka winds up and tries to hit a body shot through the clinch. They break it up. Final 10 seconds of the round. A right block by Demore. Kazelka misses on another right. Demore misses the right of his own. Kazelka gets through with that right, but he eats a right for his troubles, and that brings round one to a close. Carry the more and Kazelka. Much more coming after this. Round two next. Back at the Slovenia National Ballroom for Battle of the Ballroom 28, our main event, a middleweight championship on the line. Terry Demore in the red, and in the blue is Adam Kazelka. After a very interesting first round, which saw Terry Demore tee off for portions of the round. Vince, what are you looking for here in round two? Well, I'll tell you what, neither fighter can get real cocky here because, again, it could end in one shot. What I'm looking for in round two is I'm looking for a smarter fighter in Kazelka. We know he can be aggressive, but Kazelka has to stop taking these shots. He's got to find a way to box right now and not just have that slugfest. Would you agree? I agree, Vince. As I watch Kazelka try to muster up an offense here, that's why I was at a loss for a work momentarily. Because it seemed like the tides were shifting. And now, Demore just bobbing and weaving. Lands a nice right, followed by a left, and he's always coming to the pair. And that's been the motto for it, Terry Demore here. He has been following up every shot. But they just continue to get in the slugfest. Nice punches there by Kazelka. A clinch is drawn. Kazelka hits a nice left right out of the break. Now another one. Followed by a right. Demore falls with a right of his own. A left by Demore. Kazelka meets him with two more laps. A huge body shot. Another one. And a big right by Demore to the chin of Kazelka. But he's teeing off. There. It's gone. Demore to the ground. That's it. That might be it. A five. Ruffin Demore. Eli Ruffin can't the it's all over. Terry Demore. Has fallen to come to the body shots of Anna Kazelka. And that's it. That's all she wrote, folks. Unbelievable. Kazelka comes back. I mean, Demar was dominating. All of a sudden, Kazelka turns on the Jets. And Eli, what turned the tide right here? He caught Demar in the ribs. He might have broken a rib. He's struggling to breathe in the corner. Still isn't fully up. And I'll tell you what, they call it the sweet science. This is not ballet. Kazelka landing those body shots. And now we see Demore on the stool. This is unbelievable. What a change of pace. We saw it in the Steve Bay, Daniel Cormier, and the main fight a few months back. Sometimes it just takes a few shots to those ribs. They can change the tide that quick. And not to steal a line, I'd like to say borrowed from Mike Goldberg, but it was all over after that. That's the only words that could come out of my mouth. My apologies to Mike, wherever you're listening. But that's the only words that come out of my mouth. It happened immediately. That was it. Kazoka started to dictate his offense a little bit better. And as soon as he wound up with that first body shot and kept coming, Zamora had no answer. He tried to finish him with shots to the head that were working in the first round, but it just wasn't phasing Kazelka, and that's a warrior in that ring. 
That's why I love boxing. You never know what you're going to see. That was the ultimate comeback. That's all I can say. My concern right now is with the board. They saw him on oxygen. He's now standing, refusing the medical attention. He's a warrior. My hat is off right now to both these guys. But Terry Demore, he had nothing to be ashamed of. This kid came back a week ago against Travis Charles. Shows up tonight, fights his tail off. He looked great. Again, this is what happens in the squared circle. Wow. We'll be back with the decision. Oh, sorry, Vince. I'm just so jittery at this point. Oh, hey, let's die hard on my... You're, you're playing a play guy tonight. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no hard feelings. Your battle in the ballroom middleweight, 165-pound champion is now Adam Kozelka. And Eli, we're going to attempt to get a word with the champion, Adam Kozelka, here in a second. We'll bring him over, and we got a seat right next to us, because he's going to need to take a seat. Sit tight. All right, Vince McKee, I believe you know me. Yeah, I've met you before. How you doing, Eli Moaningham. Um, unbelievable. First of all, that first round looked like a slugfest. Eli said in the beginning of the second round, what do you expect to see? And I said, well, Kazelka needs to make a few changes. He, he doesn't need to lose his aggressiveness, but he needs to fight a little bit smarter and he can turn this around. What did your corner tell you between that round? So what the corner told me was essentially that, was to tighten everything up, shoot it straight down the middle, and focus more on boxing than fighting. Right. And, and that's exactly what I did. And most of my fights actually have ended in the second round. And I feel like that's because I am a tough fighter. And the first round, we go head to head. I figured that I'm out a little bit, but really, my coach in the corner, he's really learning exactly what I need to do. Second round, I come out, I listen to what he tells me, and it's over with from there. You know, in the years I've been covering you, and I used to cover you as a writer, and now I cover you as an announcer, I've always seen you as more of a headhunter. Tonight, you use the body shots. Yeah, and uh, mostly in amateur, people do headhunt, so that body shot is a bit unpredictable. But I knew when I was backing him up into the ropes, he's covering his head. Perfect opportunity. Let me ask you this, Adam. Yeah. Um, in the first round, he was land Terry was landing some very heavy shots on the head. At least it appeared from our point of view. Were those shots at any point damaging to, to you? And maybe it put you in a little bit of trouble. Oh, sure. I mean, I, I definitely took some good shots. Nick Dubinier, the kid who beat you. Yeah, how, he is an excellent fighter. How bad do you want that rematch? I mean, you just kind of said it. How bad do you want that rematch? Well, actually, we'll see where uh, this goes from here because, to be honest, a lot of nights, I only got five or six hours of sleep because I'd be out in Cleveland at the gym till after 8 o'clock at night, and I'd get back at, to my house around 9 o'clock, and i got to wake up at five in the morning for work so it's really been a struggle i've got to figure out what's going on if i can adjust my work schedule a little bit but if i do continue with this then absolutely i would love that rematch well eli i'll let you ask the final question i, I would always ask you know how you reach them but that's your gig so you do it yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, a lot of work, a lot of stuff to be taken in there from the new champ, Adam Kozelka. Uh, where can they find you on the old Twitter and social media and everything so they can keep up? With so you know? on Instagram, it is the Jackhammer three three three. Did you say the Jackhammer? Yep, the ah. Jackhammer three three three. And I work in a waterproofing business, so the name is just very fitting. <laughs> absolutely. And then on Facebook, just Adam Kozelka. All right. Uh, Boom. All right, you heard him, Vince. That's uh, you heard him out there too. That's where to go follow the new middleweight battle in the ballroom middleweight champion of the world, Adam Kozelka. He is once again holding gold in the Slovenian national ballroom. We may have to start making this a second home for you. Yeah, no, it feels good. I had a great time tonight. I think everyone else did as well. And again, everybody, thank you for listening. If you want to be a sponsor, it's CoachVin14 at Yahoo.com. We'll catch you soon. And for now, this is Adam Kozelka. 
the new middleweight Battle of the Ballroom champion, and continue to listen to Key on Sports.